Hey there, Sam. Having a search everywhere box in our app is certainly handy. But implementing a site-wide search function in a Laravel app may not be as straightforward as you think. Laravel Scout is great. However, it only allows us to search against one single model. And if you want to implement the site-wide search functionality, which involves searching multiple models at the same time, we definitely need more juice for that. So here I created a very basic app, which only has three models, users, posts, and comments. An user can have many posts and comments, and a post can have many comments. Now let's dive into the code. So here I have a fresh Laravel installation, and I have installed Scout, and I'm using the TNT Search Scout driver instead of Algolia. TNT Search is free and open source, and it is a great alternative to Algolia. The link is in the description if you're interested. I've also created a comment and post model using PHP Artisan make command. Let's quickly set them up so they can work with Scout. We will implement the searchable trait to enable Scout to search on this model. We also need to implement the to searchable array method to tell Scout which fields in the model that we want to include in a full text search. This function should return an array of values, which will then convert into the search index by Scout. Let's declare a class constant here to define all the fields that we want to include in the search index. The model ID is mandatory to include inside the search index for Scout to identify individual records. If you don't include it, Scout will complain about it. And now back in the toSearchable array function, we can use the only function to pull out these field values from the model. And that's all we need to do in order to set up a model for Scout. Let's do the same for our comment model as well. All right, next, we'll create a controller to handle the site-wide search API request. We'll run PHP Artisan, make controller, and in the controller, we'll define a method called search. And let's connect this method to our API. We'll go to api.php and add a new get route, which is called site search. And the callback function will be our search method we define in our controller. And now let's go back to our search method and we'll start coding the search function. Before we start doing anything, let's first write down our story. First of all, we need to load all the models in our models directory. Not all the models is using the searchable trait, so we should filter them out. Next, for each model, we'll code the search function to allow Scout to perform the full text search against the model. We'll use the search keyword supplied in the HTTP request query. Once we get the results, there's a few things that we should include for each result to improve the search experience. The first thing is our match, which includes the exact matching text and also its surrounding text. This will let the user to understand the context of the result better. You can think of it sort of like the descriptions in the results when you do a Google search. Next, we should also include the model name to let the user know which model does the result belongs to. And lastly, we also need the view link, which is the URL that brings the user to the resource, so the user can click on it and navigate to that page straight away. Once we have done that, the last step will be combining all these results together and send them back as a HTTP response. So that's our plan. Let's start coding right away. First, we need to grab the search keyword from the request. We assume the user will use the search query parameter when they are performing this get request. We'll store it as a variable for now and then we'll use it later. Next, we need to get all the models. What we're after here are the names of the model files inside our models directory, as the model name and the file names are the same. A way to do this is to load all the file path as an array and we'll map all the path to pass the file name. We can use the file facade and call the all file method load all the files inside a directory as an array of SPL file info objects. Now we want to map through each file to extract the file name. The SPL file info class actually offers a very nice interface for us to get the file name. We just need to call the get relative path name function on it. And just to test if it is working, we'll die and dump the file name and we'll quickly serve our web page. Just run PHP Artisan Surf in our console and in the browser, we see command.php, which is the first file in the models directory. That's good, but we don't really want the .php file extension. We can quickly remove it by calling the substring function by removing the last four characters on the string. But we have another issue here. We can't just assume that every files in this folder are PHP files. 
There could be some other files living inside this folder. Let's do a check to make sure that we're only getting PHP files. We'll use the substring function again to get the last four characters of the file, and if they are not equal to .php, we'll return now. That should do for now. Let's move on to the next step. We only want the models that implement the searchable trait. Let's filter the result of our map. The filter callback function will take in a class name, which is a nullable string. The first thing we want to do in here is to check whether this string is null or not. And remember, it is only null when it is not a PHP file. We'll return false to exclude it from the filter result. Now we want to check if the class here is actually an eloquent model. In other words, we need to find a way to obtain more information about this class. A good way to do this is to use PHP reflection class. The reflection class allows us to get information on any class that we fit to its constructor, and it must be a fully qualified class name. The add get namespace function here allows us to get our primary app namespace, in our case here, which is just the word app. Once we got the reflection instance, we can easily check whether the class is an instance of eloquent model by calling the is subclass of function. And for the argument, we're just passing the eloquent model class name. And to find out whether the model is searchable or not, we just need to check if the model has a search method in it or not. The reflection can do that as well. We just need to call the has method function on it and pass in the method name. In this case, it will be search. And the filter condition will be if the class is a model and it is searchable. And that will do for now. We do, however, have an issue. Let's say I want a certain model to be excluded from the site-wide search. And right now, there's no way to do that. Let's define an array where we'll put in all the models that we want to exclude. I'll put in comment for now, just for testing purposes. And to bring our two exclude variable inside our filter function, we'll need the use keyword to bring the variable into the scope. And now in our return statement, we'll add a new condition to make sure the class name is not in the to exclude array. So we'll type not in array, and the needle would be the full qualified name of the class where we can get it from the reflection get name method. The haystack would be the to exclude array. And the third argument, strict, is telling PHP to compare the values in strict mode. In other words, using the triple equal sign instead of double equal. And once again, our filter condition here would read as the class should be a model and searchable, and it is not inside the to exclude array. Let's test our code to see if it's working. And we only get post in the result because comment is excluded and user does not have the searchable trait. So if we remove comment from the to exclude array, we would see comment and post inside the result. So far, so good. Let's move on. The next part is to call the search scout function. To do that, we'll call the map function again and convert each class name into the search result. So to call the search function, we first need to resolve the class. To do that, we can use Laravel's app function to instantiate the class. Again, we need a fully qualified class name. And now we're repeating ourselves, just like in line 36, which is a big no-no. Let's refactor this. Why don't we make this a function? I'm going to call it model namespace prefix, and it will simply return the app namespace followed by models. And now we can replace the prefix with this function. Nice and clean. Now that we have resolved the model, we can call the search function straight away. The search function requires the keyword query parameter, so let's pull that in into the function scope by using the use keyword. And now we'll fetch all the search results by calling get right after the search method. For each search result, we want to include the match model and view link attribute. To do that, we can do another map on the search result. And in the callback function, we'll create the match model and view link attribute correspondingly. So to create the match attribute, we need to get all the searchable fields value and find the exact string position of the search keyword. To get a fields value, we can call the only function from the model record. But the only method accepts an array of fields name. We can make use of the searchable fields constant in our model class, but a constant also includes the ID field, which will create noise in our result and is not needed by the front end user. Let's prepare the searchable fields so we can filter out the ID field. We can call array filter on the searchable fields class constant. Our filter condition here is to include everything other than the ID field. And I'm using arrow function here, which is only available in PHP 7.4 and upwards. If you're using a lower version of PHP, you can still use the normal anonymous function here. And back in our map function, we will pull in the fields variable again into the scope using the use keyword and pass the fields variable 
into the only function. So fuse data should be an array, and we should join the elements together into one big string. Once we've got this giant string containing all the searchable text, we can now find the position of the keyword in this string. We'll use the string post function on the lowercase serialized values and lowercase keyword. The reason why we want to convert both of them into lowercase is to standardize the search, just in case the user pass in values with different casing and get frustrated because they couldn't find the exact match. Anyway, once we got a search position, our goal here is to include the text neighboring the match to provide the end user a better search experience. We also want to append or prepend a triple dot before or after our neighboring text to indicate there are more contents beyond what's being shown to the user, just like how Google did it in their search result. So the search position could be false. If PHP couldn't find the search position, the string false function will return false. So that means we need to handle this situation. We can use an if statement to make sure search position is a number. Now in the if block, our ultimate goal is to extract a portion of the serialized values which centers around the match keyword. To extract a string, we'll use the PHP built-in function substring. But to use the substring function, we need a start position and a length parameter. Let's create these numbers. The starting number would be the search position minus some kind of buffer. I'll put in 10 for now, which means we'll start slicing the string 10 characters before the match. And we need to make sure the starting number is not lesser than zero. If it is negative, we'll set start as zero. The length of the slice should contain three parts. The first part is the first section of the buffer. The second part is the length of the keyword. And the third part is the buffer after the keyword. So in other words, the length will be the length of the keyword plus two buffers. So two multiplied by 10. Now we're hard coding this buffer value at the moment, which makes it very easy for us to lose track of it in the future. And that is a big no-no. Let's refactor it into a class constant so we can easily configure it in the future. And next, we should work out if we need to add a triple dot or not, both at the front or the back. If the starting position is larger than zero, we should add the prefix. We should add a postfix if the total slice length is less than the total string length which means slice hasn't reached the end of serialized values yet. So there are more stuff after the end of the slice string, so we should add a triple dot after it. Once we set out the condition, we should just add the triple dot based on the condition to the slice string. Once that's done, we are now ready to set the match attribute to our model record, which is equal to the slice string. If slice happens to be undefined though, in other words, PHP couldn't find a search position, we'll set the match attribute to the first 20 characters of the serialized values. For the model attribute, it'll be easy. We just need to set it to class name. Again, we'll bring class name into the scope of this function. And now for the view link, let's create a new function for that. In our code add function, resolve model view link, and it will set an argument, which is our model. And the idea of this function is that it receives a model and return the resource URL that looks something like this. For example, if we have a post model, it will look like post slash one. However, we're assuming all models in our app are using this convention for the view, which is again a big no-no. It would be great if we have some sort of mapping that maps alternative URL patterns. Let's do that. We can create a new mapping array, and the key of this array will be our model class, and the value will be the alternative patterns. For example, let's say my comments models are using a URL pattern that looks something like this. Okay, now let's start writing the logic for this function. First of all, we need to get a fully qualified class name of the model. Once we got that, we should check whether the class name exists inside our mapping array. If yes, we can just use that pattern and replace the ID placeholders with the actual ID. Otherwise, we use the default convention, just like we discussed up there. With the default convention though, we need to convert the class name into kebab casing, as the class name will be in Pascal casing. All right, let's get into it. First of all, to get a fully qualified class name, we can call the get class built in PHP function for that. To check whether this class is one of the key inside a mapping array, we can simply use the has array helper function in Laravel. 
So the has function accepts two arguments. The first one is our target array, and the second one is a key name. If the key exists, it will simply return true, otherwise false. So if model class exists inside mapping, we'll simply replace the ID placeholder with the actual ID of the model. Once that's done, we'll need to convert the whole string into a full app URL with our app domain included in it. Again, we can use the Laravel URL helper, and that will do. And now, let's work on our default convention. We first need to extract the model name from the fully qualified class name. This will be straightforward. We can just split model class by backslash and get the last element in a split. We also want to pluralize our model name just like our convention. Next, to convert our model name into kebab casing, again, we can use Laravel's helper functions for that. We first need to convert it into a camel casing and then kebab. Why can't we convert it into kebab straight away? The reason is the kebab helper functions works really well with camel case string, but not so much on other casing. If you use kebab right away, you might get some unexpected output. Okay, now that our model name is ready, let's convert it into a URL. Again, we'll call the two function from the URL facade. Okay, back in the main function, we just need to return the model record after we have finished setting the attributes. Okay, now let's see how our results looks like in the browser. I have prepared some dummy records beforehand, and let's see where this leads us to. So my search term here is Anne, and we do see some records in our results. However, we have a nested collection here, with the third level being the actual model records that we want to show in the API response. Let's fix that. We should flatten our results by one level so that our results will appear on the first level. Let's try that one more time. And now we see all of our results showing up in the first level. Let's check whether our attributes are set up properly. And it looks great. Our keyword match is in there and also the surrounding text. Looking good. And the last piece of the puzzle will be creating a resource class for our search results. Let's go to our terminal and PHP Artisan make resource, I'll call it site search resource. And in the resource class, we will return only four things, the ID of the model, the match, the model, and the view link attributes. And now let's go back to our controller and put our results into this bad boy. And try this in our browser one more time. And we see a beautifully printed JSON response along with all the data that we need. And now we just need a front end to call our API. I'll quickly create a very simple front end to show you how it looks like in the browser. And that's it. We can now search everything from our app using this search box. The source code of this project is in the description, so feel free to check it out. And if you don't feel like writing this on your own on every single new project, I've also created a Laravel package that does this all for you. The link again is in the description. That's it for now. I hope that you have learned something new in this lesson, and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for the support.